of my crib. Oh, but your bitch. Yeah, she can stay there. Hey, yo, let's go. I'm staying. Get the fuck out of here, man. For all of y'all that claim y'all weren't gonna watch this year's power because you didn't like Tariq and Ghost was gone, stop lying. Like I said, if the writing is decent and they still had, still had the same elements of power, you would watch it. And in this episode, I kind of really felt like they was able to turn the corner with Tariq. I've got my wife up here with me. Y'all know I had to bring the first lady of power back. And we're going to break it all down, even though we tired as hell because we got a newborn. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications because they keep turning them off so that when I drop videos, you get them. I will be going live. And I'm going to be taking calls tomorrow night, Monday, with Larry and Sharonda from Pay Her Weight. This is my lovely, lovely wife. Hello. And she is wearing that wonderful, wonderful makeup Power sent her last year. And they sent her some more this year. We'll break that down when it gets here. First things first, honey. I like how they went back and previewed some of the holes we might have missed from last season. Um, they had Tariq having a conversation with Ghost that we didn't get a chance to see. I enjoyed that. They showed kind of a little bit more about him and a little deal with Cooper Sacks, some things he said with his mom. Did you enjoy them doing that fill in the gap? Yeah, it helped out a little bit, even mm -hmm. though there's still a lot of gaps that, you know, you come upon throughout the uh, throughout the episode. Mm -hmm. um, so it didn't completely fill in gaps, but it helped a little. Right. They kept the same music, but they changed the background, ladies and gentlemen. And I, I pretty much feel like they done that because of the backlash they got last year from Trey Sons coming in. It's a big, rich town. Like... Come on, man. Are you happy they kept the same music? I think that keeps the fans kind of connected. Did you want them to see them do something uh, new? I think we wouldn't have faulted them if they did something different with the music. Because mm -hmm. it is a different series now. So, But it's still power. Yeah, but it's still a different series. So the question then becomes, is each each one of these new iterations going to have the same music? They can't do it. Like When they do... I, Tommy's or when they do... Well, the the one they're going to do when the kids are young, uh -huh. you definitely expect that one to have new music because yeah. that has that that is a prequel to yeah. this story. Mm -hmm. I can see them doing it with Tommy's show mm -hmm. and this show, mm -hmm. but I can't see them doing a spinoff with um, Tate yeah. having the same music. Mm -hmm. But I was fine with it and... You know, hopefully they'll give some of the other shows mm -hmm. a different music, but... Yeah. I mean, like I said, I wouldn't have faulted them for changing the music, music up on this series, so... Mm -hmm. well. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, we get a chance to see um, Tasha St. Patrick being escorted out to a bail hearing. And the first thing that came to my mind during that, this chick likes Tasha. Whoever that officer was was trying to tell Tasha the game. Uh -huh. And I'm sitting here like, Tasha, she looking at your forehead like it's a chicken nugget. Oh, she, I was, did You heard that conversation she had with Tasha. Yeah. You're going to be bad. Uh -huh. You're yeah. going to be bad. Basically telling Tasha she ain't slick. She uh -huh. said, she, Tasha should have been getting tips from her on the way out the door. Right. <laughs> before she went to court. Because the lady seemed like she know she could tell her how to act, what mm -hmm. to say. And she would got off scot-free. Right. <laughs> Then, ladies and gentlemen, we see Tamika as the attorney at the bail hearing, and man, her ass killed. Tamika is a great actress. So one thing that I felt like would continue to make the series good that Power, um, 50 Cent, and Courtney Kemp have done is you keep the cast diverse, you keep the cast beautiful, and you get good actors. So some of y'all might have questions about Tariq's acting to some degree, Method Man, and Mary J. Blige. But everybody else are, they're A-listers. And Tamika is an A-lister. Mm -hmm. This show had a whole lot of extremely beautiful black people. And they had some ambiguous <laughs> colored folks up there that did good too. That district attorney, I mean that lawyer that's representing the DNC against Tamika and Tasha. She was a decent looking person too. Mm -hmm. But Tamika killed it at this hearing. How did you feel about Tamika's acting during this hearing? The things she was mm -hmm. saying to try to get Tasha off. Yeah, Tamika's always done a good job. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I agree with you. She's a great actress. She mm -hmm. did a great job. Um, I was surprised when she got fired. <laughs> I 
Um, but look, she became an attorney. She became um um you know attorney. She's doing the thing now. No, I'm talking about surprise when Tasha fired her. Oh this oh yeah yeah. I don't know if you're gonna get into that, but I'm gonna get. You know, okay. I gotta get into that. Right. that. That's too big of a narrative in the story. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then we see Tariq after he leaves the bail hearing. Um, he meets up with Stearns, and I'm assuming this is the, the black lady was the director for this school, and basically. They they tell Tariq that in one of the, the, the things he's going to have to do to stay in this school, ladies and gentlemen, is something that we see in colleges all over the country. You've got a dumb athlete who is such a great athlete, the school wants to make money off that athlete, so they get smart people to do their work for him. Stearns makes that deal for him, and the daggone, I'm going to assume that that black lady was the dean, signs off on it. Mm -hmm. Is this not a typical story? And basically, Stearns is saying, if you don't, if you don't help this boy, you don't get to stay here under your deal. Right, right. <laughs> so this was the beginning of my eye rolling during this show. <laughs> so one, Tariq shows up to the meeting, showing you know irresponsible, whatever. Then they give him this deal where he has to tutor this guy, not only, not in one subject, in all of the subjects. All of them. So they know this guy, they know Tariq is at this school under all this duress with this family stuff going on in the background. Mm -hmm. um, and then not only that, but he has to tutor this guy in whatever, however many <laughs> classes he's taken. So he's like a universal <laughs> expert on everything at the Every, school. Well, it's not like they're giving the athletes that hard of a subject. I mean, but still. The, the boy probably taking basic biology, basic uh, uh, um, I physics. Mean, you never know. There's some athletes. I mean, a lot of athletes are, are very advanced in academics. Okay, if they was advanced in academics, they wouldn't have, have somebody doing their work for them. No, they did not hire him to do his work. They hired him to tutor him. Crystal, you just said it yourself. He's doing the work for him. That's what he's doing. Exactly. But he's supposed to be tutoring. Which you're coming back to my argument. He's not tutoring, and that's what mm -hmm. they tell you in college. I was mm -hmm. an athlete in college. Wait for it. Mm -hmm. They tell you, you're tutoring. Well, you're really doing all the work. Mm -hmm. You've seen at the end of this story, he went online and was filling out the work for Miss, mm -hmm. uh, what's her name, Miss uh, Milgram's class. Mm -hmm. That was his work. But they basically, basically setting him up to fail. Or these are just unrealistic expectations. Exactly. So you got all this stress going on in your life, and mm -hmm. you got to tutor this guy in everything. Which, which, <laughs> which, ladies and gentlemen, is the the mantra of power. You set like eight different storylines that are all going to collapse on each other, and they've done a good job in this very first episode of setting up. It's at least five different storylines. That could collapse. So you're still dealing with Tasha going to jail, mm -hmm. getting out of jail. You're still dealing with Cooper Sachs, who's the U.S. attorney. Mm -hmm. He's under the thumb of Tariq and John Mock, who popped up this episode. Mm -hmm. Tariq is dealing with this athlete whose mom is a mob boss mm -hmm. and got a tutor him to stay in school. Mm -hmm. and, his, and he's got to stay in school. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, Tariq can't get to the trust fund money till he graduates. Yeah. And he can't stay in this school unless he helps his basketball player. That's like six different narratives, ladies and gentlemen. And he's dealing with Effie a little bit on the side. Dealing and with dealing Effie. with Epiphany on now, the side. Now, now he's got a love triangle going on that we're going to get into as we get further into this this review. Oh, good. Like yeah. I said, my eyes were rolling all well, in the back of my head this whole show because there are so many different leaps. So many different leaps. 50 and Courtney, I know y'all seen my video. I've heard the word. I'm wearing y'all's t-shirt from last year. Shout a brother out every now and then because nobody cakes up harder for y'all show than me and Mark Dark. No. Now, Tariq meets Lauren. <laughs> Who teaches him the way of the school mm -hmm. and basically is like, you know, she likes a real black brother. She don't want no brother dipped in chocolate, but is white on the inside like mm -hmm. an Oreo. Mm -hmm. What did you think of that introduction of meeting Lauren and her giving him the rundown and telling Tariq about Professor Megram? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just an introduction of a new character. So we'll see where it goes. That's I guess she's kind of like the... The Effie character, but the, the not doing dirty, I guess. That's how you looked at it? To uh -huh. me, I looked at it as though they were setting the narratives for she's going to be someone important in Reek's life at Stanfield mm -hmm. College. Yeah. And that at some point in time, there is going to definitely be a love triangle. Because it seems like she likes him mm -hmm. more than he likes her. But 
also that she he might need her at some point in time. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I got from it. Yeah, and this is the little girl that played on Barbershop, if y'all don't recall, from back in the day with Queen Latifah. She was Queen Latifah's daughter or something, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> All right, after that, ladies and gentlemen, Reek text Tasha about the, the events at Truth. And then Tamika finds out from them having another little talk and a hearing with Tasha that it was Tariq that really did the shooting. Now, Tasha didn't per se fess up to that, but Tamika put the dots together because she was so involved in the case last year. Mm-hmm. And from there, Tasha, in a, in a blaze of rage, fires Tamika, tells her to get the hell out of the room. Do you think Tamika figured out it was Tariq? Yeah, Tamika, fig- Tamika figured out it was Tariq. She didn't give any hints that she knew T- that that was the case. She T- knew there was somebody else, but... T- Tamika knew. She said, Tasha, was it Reek? And then she she knew it was Reek. Uh-huh. And Tasha fired her because she knew the truth. Right, right, and, right. And, and, and if you're not on the case no more, then you can't go run your damn mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that confirmed it for her. Mm-hmm. And basically from there, she um, Tamika calls Reek and says, you need to hire an attorney that knows how to win without telling the truth. Mm-hmm. And that's when he gets Davis McLean. Method Man. Now, what did you think about... You You felt like Method Man looks different than what he normally looks like. Uh, when is the last time you seen Method Man? 1992? It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. So, I mean, he looks the same to me. Just, he just gained, mature. Gained a little weight. Yeah, That's it's just it. hard to see, mm-hmm. you know, people from, when you see them back in the day and see that they've matured. Um, he, mm-hmm. he, you know, has grown nicely, matured nicely, but... Yeah. Um, it's, he got on his grown man look, I guess. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so then we see Reek meet his buddy Braden from high school. Um, and, you know, Braden just wants to have the college experience. Mm-hmm. He basically is asking Reek, well, why do you want to do this advanced program to get out of school early? We know why Reek wants to do it, but Braden mm-hmm. doesn't. Yeah. And that's when we find out Effie is still around. She's at Yale. Mm-hmm. Broke poor little Tariq's heart, ruined his drug business. Reek runs over there, meets up with Effie. She's still feeling him, like, personally, she wants to date him. And Reek is kind of at this point now where because she hurt him, it's all business for him. Mm-hmm. She gives him some drugs, um, basically, and took him. Do you think Do you think that she's going to be a long-going connect? I don't. But mm-hmm. what did you feel about Reese and Effie? And will she have a, a major role in the story? I think they kind of brought her back for fanfare because mm-hmm. uh, everybody talked about how much they liked her on the last series and she just disappeared and we never saw her again. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. in terms of a love triangle, they're already foreshadowing that he's going to be with the Lauren, Lauren and Diana. And Diana. So are mm-hmm. you going to add a third person in the mix? I don't know. I don't really see it, but hey, who knows? Well, I mean, more p- people really want Effie back in the store. I don't think people are just satisfied with seeing her for one moment. I mean, mm-hmm. because a lot of dudes thought Effie was hot. Mm-hmm. She is hot. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, Diana and Lauren is hot too. Mm-hmm. So maybe that'll fill the void. But at, but people already built um, emotions mm-hmm. around Effie already. Mm-hmm. So I, I hope they include her somehow, some way. I guess we'll have to see. It would yeah. be good if they did. Yeah. It'd be good if they did. Um, from there, Reet has to go to this um, review for the book. So that they can see if he can be advanced to the next level. Into this accelerated program. He graduates in three years instead of four. The program's called Cano, Cano something? I'm not sure. Yeah, Canola something like that. Not Canola oil, but Canola something like that. And so he's at this hearing and Professor Megram is caking up for him. But she has to go to another professor to really get help named Jabari. And then, of course, they got to go sit in front of the white guy who's the overseer of everything. So Tariq shows up to this book review. He read some of the book, but he didn't finish it. He only had 24 hours. Now, the black guy, Jabari, the professor, is kind of like, why you want me to stick my neck out for another brother? Miss Megram says, because he's a brother. And we also learn from them that they have a background, ladies and gentlemen. These two, at some point in time, used to be together, but for whatever the reason, they aren't now, and it sounds like Jabari still got some feelings about the way they broke up, all right? Now, it's never a good situation when you are fraternizing in a work situation like this. 
So, because it can lead to disasters. But in this situation, Miss um, Professor Megan was able to use the powers of her good looks and whatever relationship they had in the past to get him to cake up for Tariq. Tariq didn't read the book. Mm -hmm. He didn't finish it, and the white guy knew it. And then he showed up late. Mm -hmm. That would have been a wrap. Oh, you know it would have been a wrap for that me. That would have been a wrap. But, but through Jabari... And I don't think Jabari done this for Reek per se. Mm -hmm. I think Jabari did it because he still got deep feelings for Miss Megram. So expect a love scene, a steamy love scene from them two at some point in time. And was able to get to Reek to be able to do this again. They played the violin strings. You heard it. His family. Yep. And he's yep. gone through so much. Give him another chance. It would have been a wrap. Yeah. Now, now, so I'll get to that in a minute. But let me move on. Sax and John Mott, and I like John Mott from last year, y'all, meet up in Sax's office with Steve, the head of the DNC. Now, the DNC is trying to keep their hands clean of all the dirtiness they know about James St. Patrick. Mm -hmm. So Steve wants Cooper Sax to bring a kingpin statute mm -hmm. on Tasha. Mm -hmm. And why is Cooper Sax so hesitant? Because <laughs> he can get dragged into it. Yeah. <laughs> he always doing some crazy stuff. He can get dragged into it. He knows he was a part of the whole thing. Now, y'all know I started calling Cooper Sacks punk ass last year because he is. And the very next scene, we see him meet, meet his family, and his real name is Nancy, which had my wife asking, is he really a man? Is he really a woman? I don't know what. Yeah, I didn't. Get, um, I have to go back and watch that scene. But I'm trying to get what they were trying to say. I I think what that, ladies and gentlemen, my interpretation of it was because Cooper Sacks has been just a constant failure, and he has woman like. You, when you pick on a man back in the old school days, you basically say they're a pussy, they're a woman, and I think back in his growing up days, they refer to him as Nancy because he acted like a soft man. And so he doesn't like that nickname, and it's a family legacy to have attorneys in the family. And he's carrying on that legacy, right? But not doing a good job of it, apparently. Exactly. <laughs> so little brother offers Cooper Sacks a job because mm -hmm. they've got a family attorney business. Mm -hmm. And he says, Cooper Sacks, dad is all happy that you are carrying on this legacy of serving the people. Mm -hmm. But you're going to give it up. You're just going to give it up. So I'm offering you a job because when you fuck up, I'm going to be right here waiting on you. And Watch your mouth. Well, that's what he said. Oh, okay. No, that's, that's what the brother said. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, significance of them doing, his, doing Cooper Sack's backstory and understanding the brothers. They don't just put this stuff in here for nothing. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? I guess Cooper Sack's going to mess up. I mean, he always messes up. In, like, how much are they going to delve into the family business? I have no idea. But they highlighted the brother for a reason, and so we'll see. I I I gotta think that the brother is crooked too, mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. or dirty. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's another storyline they're adding into this whole thing that adds more to the stories. All right, all right. Here we go. <laughs> Tariq <laughs> meets his roommate Ezekiel. He catches roommate in there hitting the girl from the back. He was like, give me a minute. The girl's like, hell no. So he said, give him 15 minutes. Then Reek and Ezekiel meet up and they go meet his crazy family in Queens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is when we get to see Monet played by Mary J. Blige. We get to meet um, Diana, the daughter, and we get to meet Kane, the brother. And he meets Kane because Tariq's going in the bathroom. Kane's getting head from another family member's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that whole scene, honey. He brought Tariq to the New York cookout. I mean, it was just chaos. A bunch of stuff going on, partying. Tariq's eyes just lit up like that was the place to be. Um, and like it, it was, a, I guess, a good introduction into Mary Day Blige's character mm -hmm. in the family. So they're yep. related to the basketball player. Those are his cousin siblings. They're all, right. they're, they're, so, they're all cousins, but they're so close and grew up together that they consider each other brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a lot of, a, a lot of stuff right. <laughs> to unpack. Diana tells Tariq about um, her father who's in jail mm -hmm. um, and, you know, how Mary J. Blige just kind of stood by the whole thing. And that's when we start seeing the, the little love interest building between 
Tariq, mm-hmm. and Diana. Now, and Tariq seems like he was very interested in Diana. Mm-hmm. And I know all my dark-skinned girls is very thrilled about that. He shunned the light-skinned chicks and is all up into the dark-skinned girl. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? Everybody on the show is beautiful. They've done a great, a great job of casting young talent. Mm-hmm. Really, really good job. Yeah. And so... Um, go get your baby. I hear her. Go, I go, go get your baby <laughs> I, I'll, and bring her in here. I'll hold it down till you get back. So then we, we bounce on to the scene where Kane winds up shooting old boy who girl he took. Now, I didn't think they was going to start doing the killing this early in the season, ladies and gentlemen. But damn, whenever I look at Kane, I think of Bobby Brown. Y'all know he played Bobby Brown in the BET special. So whenever I look at him, it's hard for me to see past Bobby Brown. But hell, he did his job. Went down that little stairwell. Now, what's up with power, ladies and gentlemen? I always want to kill people in a stairwell or somewhere behind stairs. They love doing that. You remember how um, Angela got shot by Tommy? And here we go, moving on. What's she up to? She's ready to eat. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen... Wife got to go because the baby's ready to eat. We'll finish this thing up without her. You did good, honey. Thank you. Now, here's the part, ladies and gentlemen, that kind of made me... This whole entire story, they're trying to get us to feel um, emotions with Tariq. And I feel like Tariq has done a good job this episode until he goes back to the second review of that book. And he gives them... The, he gives them the rundown, but ladies and gentlemen, I didn't buy it. I mean, they're making it seem like Tariq got a platinum and gold tongue. But he sells a good story. The white guy's thrilled. The black people are thrilled. Bam, Tariq is moving on. Apparently, he's going to be able to advance and get in this course to get out of school three years early. That was the first time I said to myself, hmm, I'm not buying Tariq. I didn't buy that. Now, maybe it was meant for black people to feel like you can't buy it. Where we can pull one over on the white people. But that was the only part in this whole thing about Tariq. I really wasn't buying. So then we go on. Sat meets with Tariq. To just talk about the issues going on with his mom. And Cooper Sacks wants. You know. Tasha. Cooper Sacks wants Tasha to. Take the deal. He put in place with Tamika. And as of this point. That can't be done, ladies and gentlemen, simply because Tamika has quit and Tasha done basically gave up some evidence. They wanted to try to blame it on Andre Coleman, but there is no shooter residue evidence to blame it on Andre Coleman. So now Tariq is forcing Cooper Sack's hand and making him make other moves. And then we've already seen where Tariq has tried to hire Davis McClain, who is Obviously, he must be one of the most famous attorneys in New York. And Davis basically told Tariq, look, you got to have 500K to get me. So Tariq borrows his homeboy Zeke's phone, who has a whole lot of IG followers. He goes on IG Live. Now, ladies and gentlemen, whenever you don't have the money for a situation and someone is trying to strong arm you, having a social media presence is another way to leverage the playing field for you. I've done it when people try to threaten me with whatever. Somebody's like, you know, oh, I'm not going to give you your money back for your rental car. And I'd be like, you know what? I have a large YouTube following. I will show them how you done me wrong, and I will put it on YouTube and name your corporation. Well, basically, Tariq done the same thing to Davis McClain Only difference is he said Davis is going to be taking their case. Now, in New York, everybody knows who Tariq St. Patrick is because of his father, about to be lieutenant governor, and because of the death. It's hot in the news. And he basically forced Davis McClain's hands. And not only did he force it, but he only had to pay the man 50 grand. And Davis McClain basically tells him, look, man, this is only going to get you a week. (laughs) That's all you're getting out of me is a week. So Davis McClain goes and meets Tariq's mom and basically said, that boy loves you. And he told Davis to tell his mom to basically tell the truth if you love me. So I know that they had everyone thinking at this point in time, tell the truth if you love me means say I did it, Tasha. Just say I did it, Tariq. Well, we get in the courtroom And lo and behold, instead of saying Tariq did it, 
Damn it, she ratted on Thomas Patrick Egan. I said, damn, Tasha. That was your home. That was your weed smoking homeboy, and you ratted on him. Thomas Patrick Egan. And then we're thinking that it's about to be a wrap. Tasha about to get out. Then all of a sudden, we see Steve from the DNC back there with Cooper Sacks. They have a piece of paper. They still want to execute the kingpin plan. So they go up there to that racially ambiguous attorney, who's another one of these characters that 50 Cent and Courtney Kemp got that is an attractive person. Y'all did a damn good job of casting. And she drops the charges all against Tasha. And we're all thinking, oh, yeah, she's about to go home. Only for Cooper Sacks to walk his punk ass up there and then slap her under arrest for a kingpin statue. And they want to give her the needle for this thing. They're going to try to take her down. Now, y'all know good and damn well, Tariq ain't going to sit by for this. He's got Cooper Sacks all in his eyes. Davis McClain is just befuddled. Because he's like, what in the hell you got me into, Tariq? And Tariq pulls another one of these scenes where it's hard to buy into his acting, where he gives Davis McClain another one of those platinum and gold tongue speeches about, I'm going to make you the most famous attorney in New York. And I'm thinking to myself, damn, he must already be the most famous because you did an IG Live that only had 2,000 people watching, and that was enough to push him to deal with you. He's already probably somewhat famous. But apparently, the things that make Davis McClain go, ladies and gentlemen, is fame and money. And Tariq figured it out. And in the very last scene, we see Tariq looking up Monet's husband, who's in jail, learning that she probably more than likely is into the drug game. She's got dealings into the drug game. And Tariq already seen the atmosphere at the cookout. He's seen how the mom came out there and was going to let the two, the two brothers fight it out. She's seen how he saw how homeboy had a gun when the police pulled up. And that wasn't just a gun, ladies and gentlemen. That was a sawed-off rifle, ladies and gentlemen. Double-barrel sawed-off rifle. So Tariq, having that knowledge, they're trying to install the intelligence of ghosts in Reek. Because I've told y'all before, James St. Patrick is dead. But Ghost lives on, and he's living on through Tariq. So leave me all your comments, ladies and gentlemen, on how you felt about this episode. Everything you're looking forward to this season. I will be doing my trailer reviews where I break down the next coming episode trailer. But I won't be playing the trailer in the review because they be demonetizing for like eight seconds of video. I mean, damn, give me a break, y'all. As much as I cake up for y'all, cut a brother some slack. I'll drop that tomorrow. But more importantly, join us live, ladies and gentlemen. Me, Larry, and Sharonda from Pairweight will be going live. We'll be taking your questions. We'll be going through all the theories you guys give because you guys give excellent theories. And that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe. Get yourself that life game. And until that next sexy as hell video, I'll see you.